Uh, right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for coming and staying um, towards the end of the day. Um, I'm going to talk about using free software in commercial environments, so um, businesses, that sort of thing. Um, I am um, a free software consultant, and we work a lot with free software um, in commercial organizations, um, government departments, and so on. So I'm going to be talking, actually having a look at um, why in the UK Linux adoption isn't um, as far ahead as it is in other countries in Europe, um, and um, have a look at some places where Linux already is, and um, example of some of the things that we've been doing with Linux, um, uh, and about reasons to present to your boss or whoever makes the decisions that uh, actually they ought to be considering Linux a lot more seriously than um, most people are and get ahead of the competition. So um, just a little bit about myself. I um, am a free software developer. I have been um, using Linux for quite a while and uh, I'm a Debian developer. Anyone heard of Debian here? And um, another small program called OpenOffice and a few other projects like that. Uh, I, my commercial background is I started off as a software developer. Um, and um, um, now with Creditive, we uh, basically provide services to people who are wanting to use free software and um, help them to make the most use of free software not by selling some product or other that's built on free software, we like to relabel or something, it's actually, we'll, we are independent, we'll actually help people find the best way to make use of free software. So Creditive itself, um, we provide support and um, services. Um, the support is the main thing that we do. Uh, we run the Open Source Support Center um, we've got guys who are sitting around the clock um, on the end of the phone able to help organizations who've put free software in mission-critical places, and there are an awful lot of them. And we have offices in the UK, which I run, and um, Germany as well. We have uh, quite a lot of Debian developers. There's a few around here. Um, and we're involved in a lot of open source projects as well. Um, there's just a few, Postgres, GNOME, KG, OpenOffice, and a whole load more. So we are really into not just taking uh, open, soft, open source software um, and using it with our customers. We are also into giving it back, um, giving the work that we, have, um, that we have done and the improvements that we've made back into the community. So we're active in a lot of places. Um, we're also a member of the Open Source Consortium. I just wanted to mention that since we're in the UK. Um, this is a group of open source companies um, who work together in promoting free software um, and also in being a larger consortium where we have a, a larger voice than just the individual companies. Um, so the consortium also does um, campaigning as well. So. Um, adding the commercial view um, to uh, free software debate. So um, where, for example, the BBC recently in England has said, well, we're going to provide you video, video streaming, but um, to start with, it's only going to be available on Windows, and it'll take us... We, we'll commit to um, providing free formats, but, well, not in the first couple of years. And we're actually in a position as with a consortium to say, from a commercial point of view, hey, these biz our businesses will be losing money if you do this because um, by, only, by people only being able to use um, Windows to view video from the BBC, if they're thinking, well, let's, I'm, I'm going to buy a new computer, but I want to be able to view video, then um, they're going to be thinking twice about free software if there's no streaming available. So um, the Open Source Consortium is able to um, provide a commercial argument as well, which um, 
in certain political circles were, is um, useful. It, it's not just single free software developers, which people might see as being um, individuals sitting in their bedroom at night. We're actually um, a commercial business, and we are being affected by these sorts of decisions. Um, we're also a member of the Linux Verband, which is the, a similar sort of organization in Germany. So, Linux in the UK. Now, um, I am in the position of talking to companies about Linux and saying, hey, how about using Linux in, um, in your server room and so on. And um, a lot of people that I talk to are just like, Linux, now I think I've heard of it, but not really um, aware of what it can do, what it can do for their companies. Um, one of the things that seems to be significant is the lack of the support in the public sector. Now, our next speaker, Patrick, will be talking more about that. Um, but uh, it does seem to be... Um, lost my thread. It does seem to be um, important in terms of uh, if large areas of government are using a particular technology, then that will filter through to commercial organizations as well. Now, Linux is being used in dark corners in organizations a lot. Um, it's just at the moment the people further up the management chain aren't really aware of it so much. Um, another thing is the purchasing methods. I'm seeing a lot, for example, about certification and so on. Um, for uh, schools as well, there are um, bodies saying to be eligible for software to be used in schools, they must pass a series of tests and certification where this is fine for companies that are actually targeting the UK market market and that's just another thing that they have to do is to make sure that all of the right boxes are checked but that doesn't help you if you're trying to um, adopt an open source project which has maybe got thousands and thousands of users around the world um, but it doesn't tick the right boxes so these sorts of things they're maybe not deliberately put in the way to stop open source ad adoption but it does make it a lot harder in the UK so um, other countries, for example, um, Germany and Spain, um, are a lot further where the, the government has actually taken um, a lead as well. And in, uh, in Germany in particular, we saw Linux adoption um, become much more widespread um, earlier than in the UK. So if you compare the two countries, it's as if the UK is a few years behind. Um, so the cycle would start with organizations secretly saying, oh, well, we can use it in a particular area of our server room or whatever, or maybe just the IT guys installed a Linux server without anybody else knowing. And then um, the managers are realizing, okay, this is becoming a part of our critical infrastructure. We better make sure that it's supported and so on, which is where they got in contact with companies like Creditive. Um, and then later on, they'll actually as Linux becomes more and more popular, they'll eventually say, okay, we're, we're using Linux here. So we've got quite a few companies that um, are not willing to, to say that they are using Linux, but they are actually using it in their data, in their data servers and um, are running mission-critical software on it. So um, in Germany, there is a, a lot of um, use of Linux in the public sector. Um, the Parliament, German Parliament, for example, was a quite a um, well-known project. And um, the Foreign Office, for example, we've recently um, uh, migrated a whole load of desktops in the um, central um, Foreign Office um, to Debian desktops. So. Um, we're even getting adoption in the desktop area as well. City of Munich is another very high profile um, project as well. So where can you find Linux in the UK already? One of the places where you're likely to find it is in server infrastructure of companies. So web servers, databases, files, and mail server. 
Now, the web server is interesting um, in that it's um, quite often companies are outsourcing their websites to companies which are uh, running Linux without even realizing it. Uh, so Apache has been around since 1995, and um, it's got a very large market segment as well. So chances are that your organization is actually using Apache and using free software. So even though people might not know a great deal about it, they're actually using it all over the place. Um, the database is another one. Uh, we do a lot of um, database consulting, helping people make the best use of Postgres. Um, Postgres is fine in a huge number of cases. Unless you're running absolutely massive databases, you're unlikely to um, be running into limitations of the um, Postgres database itself. So um, most people who are running databases could consider it, and there are huge cost savings to be gained from it. Um, we had uh, we talked to somebody who was who needed um, uh, five Oracle instances um, just to be able to run one of their databases, and it, it was costing them over a hundred thousand pounds per year. And um, you can go to Postgres, and um, the actual purchasing costs and licensing costs go to zero. Um, all you have to worry about is support. And Postgres is um, very high performance and is able to um, run very um, demanding applications in terms of um, making sure that you have transactional integrity as well. Here are some examples of email um, services that you might find running in server rooms. Um, SendMail, very popular. Um, in fact, between them, SendMail and Post Postfix, those are the most um, popular mail servers on the internet. They don't have quite such a big market share as Apache, but it's st still larger than um, the individual commercial servers. Um, Anti-spam, antivirus filters are very um, important as well. And of course, you don't, when you're running them on a Linux machine, you don't have to worry about um, your server being affected by viruses. Now, um, the actual mail scanning, this is one thing that we, as a company, have um, done, is to put together a system that um, is made up of um, virus scanning, spam spa scanning, and a firewall. And this is one of the things that you can do with free software. You can take individual components, put them together um, to make something a lot more powerful than you could get um, just with the in individual components but um, something that will also scale to um, large systems as well. The um, security filter that we have, um, we are using a, a lot of different technologies. Um, the mail server, and then we're using high availability um, to make sure that um, the actual outside SMTP server is always available. And then we're actually doing the scanning on separate um, machines as well. Um, and also doing um, blacklists as well. So this um, is scalable from a um, large number of machines. And um, it's also not limited just to Linux. It will run on any operating system where the software is available. And it's all based around free software. And that means that we are using it and also um, contributing back to those projects where we're finding um, scalability issues and so on in the software. So going from that system of several components, we've also added another layer, which is to, uh, to create a complete cluster as well. Now, these two projects as well, everyone will have heard of, and um, even though Linux on the desktop isn't so widespread yet, certainly these two projects have pushed free software um, into, um, well, millions of installed, uh, of in, of installed systems. 
Um, so these two are names which people have heard of and are using on their desktops. So we're definitely getting there. And um, it's fairly easy to point out to somebody, actually, you are using free software. And um, maybe you should think about using it um, more and more in the commercial environment as well. So why might people want to adopt Linux and free software in the commercial enterprise? You have financial savings. Now, this will depend a lot on your particular needs and requirements. Um, there's been a lot of debate about total cost of ownership. You can skew the figures any way you want, really, depending on what particular configuration you decide to pick. Um, but there's certainly, with the, with the database example I gave you, there, there are a lot of cases where you are clearly saving a lot of money. Um, stability as well is pretty important if you're running things like banking software or um, you are dealing with high transaction volumes. Um, and also, if you care about being able to use your software the whole time and um, not have to um, suddenly find that your IT department says, well, everything's gone down for an hour, go for lunch. Um, security as well is important. It's a lot harder to get into um, Linux, um, FreeBSD, uh, and other free um, operating systems built on Unix um, because they're actually built to be secure from the ground up. And of course, flexibility. This is um, that you are able to um, either pick and choose individual components from those that are available, or if there's something that you want to do that nobody else has done, you can take something that exists and extend it, or you can start your own as well. Now, not everyone is able to start their own project, um, but there are plenty of people, talk to the Open Source Consortium, who are able to do that for you. So, um, we're here at the Debian conference, but I just wanted to um, talk about Debian from a point of view of if you have, if you are a commercial organization what um, how should you be thinking of Debian um, these are um, reasons to uh, to adopt Debian in um, in your organization um, it's a project that's run by volunteers. That means that anyone can get involved. And so if you are making use of a lot of um, Debian, for example, then there's nothing to stop you from actually taking somebody on to um, become a part of the Debian community and um, to extend Debian and um, to add uh, both to um, package additional um, the, the extra software that you need, um, but also to introduce changes that affect not just your organization, but Debian as a whole. Um, you'll find that it runs on a lot more architectures than Windows or most other commercial software, and that makes it easy to deploy the same operating system across a wide range of hardware. Um, it's not just big in the UK, it's big all over the world. And um, that means that it's been tested by a lot more people than um, just those maybe testing a particular UK offering. Uh, yeah, it's one of the most popular distributions. Um, and the um, main thing is that it's built on the same um, principles as the free software projects that make it up. So, um, that means that there's no commercial company behind it deciding to take it in a particular direction. It goes in the direction in which the whole project is happy with. So what um, if they're still not convinced, um, what benefits do you get by um, installing Debian and free software in, in your enterprise? you get software which is high quality, which um, 
It's built to standards which are open. So I was talking about the BBC case earlier. Um, the software, there, there is certainly software for streaming audio and video and for viewing it. And it's built around standards which haven't been put together in a closed room, but are open, things like the um, OG standard um, for audio and video, which we're streaming our video on at the moment. Um, and uh, portability as well, you um, are able to, um, you, you're not so dependent on um, a particular hardware configuration which you have because um, Debian will run on such a wide range of hardware. By investing in free software, you get to take part in the, um, in the direction that the software is taking. On the simplest level, that's just by submitting bug reports and giving feedback to the project. Um, if you um, are able to invest more into a project, then you can actually implement new, new features yourselves. Um, to um, to meet your business needs, and by doing that, you can actually get software um, which works a lot better um, with your organisation than something which you can buy, than you would have to buy off the shelf. And um, yeah, you're independent of your suppliers, so that means that um, you're not actually uh, depending on dependent on one particular company. If uh, that company decides to take the software in a direction that you don't want to go, or they decide to stop supporting it, you have the opportunity to go somewhere else and carry on with the system that you have. And um, that in itself is very important. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't see it until it's too late, until they've been burnt and um, they actually want to um, carry they want to carry on with a with a um, piece of software that's um, been obsoleted alre already. <coughs> right. Um, well, I hope that's given you an idea of the sort of reasons why um, you might want to look at free software in more detail. And um, do you have any questions? Um, yes, I was just going to ask, uh, would you be able to give us an idea of, um, is it a complete range of size of companies you deal with, or is it mainly large or small, or what have you? It's um, medium to large, really. We The support that we offer is um, third level support, so normally um, we would expect companies to have um, system administrators on site to do the general sort of stuff. Um, the support that we do is uh, the more detailed um, problems where, you know, for example, um, what have I had, um, open office um, not able to do digital signing, stuff, stuff where we've actually got to go into the software and find out what's wrong and fix it. Thank you. Over at the back. In the last two talks, we heard a lot of uh, uh, free software and open source software is used in industry. But I think a very important point which uh, wasn't mentioned is actually that it generates labor in the area where it's, uh, where it's uh, yeah, enforced to use or where people are using it. So do you have any, any figure? Do you have uh, a number you can say uh, how, many, how many positions or how many labor uh, was generated because uh, because of uh, the use of open software uh, in the area here. No, I don't have any figures. Um, we're in contact with a lot of open source companies um, who are um, working with open source software, and certainly um, that would be I don't know seven hundred several hundred people. Um, I would imagine in the UK now, I'm seeing a, a lot more um, positions in countries like Germany, um, for example, in um, uh, Spain as well, where 
the government is adopting um, Linux on a much wider scale. Um, here in the UK, we are um, people are using uh, free software, but um, it's not really caught on to the same extent in the economy yet. Would you say that uh, the number of available positions uh, in the IT market is growing uh, significantly in the last couple of years because of the use uh, of uh, open software? Growing significantly? Well, probably not because um, you are, th there's already a big market for jobs for people fixing problems in proprietary software. Windows and so on, and now Linux is actually less labor intensive to administer. Um, so I don't see it as being a massive increase. What I do see is a, is a change in where the money is going. So instead of software licenses being paid to countries outside of the UK, we're seeing people being employed with that money instead. Uh, I was talking about, or I meant the flexibility, which was uh, emphasized in the last two talks, uh, open software is offering people. And because of the flexibility, you are able to adapt software. But for adapting software, you need people who do that actually. So is this, this particular feature of open software uh, increasing the number of jobs? Well, in that sense, yes, it's increasing the number of jobs in the country, um, in the place where people are um, working on the software, as opposed to um, the jobs being um, b belonging to companies that are, s that are writing one piece of software and then selling it a lot of, uh, to a lot of places all over the world. So yes, there are certainly in open source there are jobs being created for this sort of work. Yes, I've been told that uh, <coughs> there is a, a vast market of uh, new applications that are coming online because of uh, free software. Can you uh, give us any figures on uh, how many uh, different kinds of extra, not, not the software development, not the software maintenance, but the uh, jobs that are available because of uh, the software being available. I didn't get you. Uh, some factory <laughs> might start turning out some kind of widget. <laughs> because there is free software available, but they would have not done so had there not been uh, the computer power to do it. Right, and um, are there people doing that? Yes, I mean, certainly um, companies like Creditive exist because um, we, are, um, we are making use of software, of free software. Um, now, I don't have figures on that exactly. Um, but it's, it's more a case of in countries like the UK where there's not a great deal of software being produced in comparison to the States or whatever, that you're seeing the jobs being created for people to write the software instead of having to administer software. So um, I see it more as a transition from um, where people are otherwise employed just to run software, but to um, become a part of cre um, the software creation as well. Hello. <coughs> I can give a quick comment about job creation and, and, uh, and entrepreneurship and businesses starting is the free software that people uh, overlook, such as the web. 
the web is a product of free software, open standards, you know, and, uh, it, you know, there wouldn't be a dot-com startup uh, anything without that, the, these tools that these are they're provided here. So, and uh, dot-com stuff is pretty healthy right now. This is where all the innovation's happening. So we can, we can really attribute job creation to that and these tools. We got the numbers now. We know how much it is. It's twenty percent of all software services in Europe is free software. It will probably be thirty percent in two thousand and six six no two thousand and ten is the EU report showing us from UN University Merit in Netherlands. So you should go to the net, look that up. Sixty eight percent of new software when made by the industry all over is using uh, free software. So uh, kind of the biggest uh, users of free software is in-house because most, uh, most businesses don't make off-the-shelf software. That's just 7%. Most of the, of the free software developers or the software developers in general working as consultants or in-house to the business system, banking. We saw the telecom industry here presented today. But this is companies that don't sell their software. You don't see that. You, they sell something else. They sell services. So uh, it's the tide has turned already. It's what I'm telling the students when I'm traveling around is that when disregarding free software, you say no to 68% of the industry. Are you stupid? Uh, so the problem now is basically it's not enough people knowing free software from the universities and colleges. If they disregard, and a lot of teachers have done that, they will actually jeopardize your job opportunities because of the, because of the growth of free software. Great, thanks a lot. Has there been any interest in um, desktop rollouts in Britain, or is it just not in the cards for anybody, really? Um, yes, there is interest in desktop. In, desktop. in the UK itself, um, we are seeing some usage. Um, there was a um, project uh, where um, quite a large number of desktops in the Scottish police were converted recently. Um, now that didn't actually take off and it's gone back again. Um, I think what I mentioned about how the adoption seems to be a few years behind some of the other countries. Now there are other countries which have had large desktop installations already um, and I think that we will certainly get to that stage at some point, but at the moment in the UK, the main area where Linux is growing, I think, um, in, on the commercial side is in the server room. But as the software gets better and better, it's, um, people are going to take more note of the desktop as well. I mean, I said about Firefox and OpenOffice. You know, those, those are big on the Windows desktop, and um, that makes it a lot easier to move if everyone's already using um, free software. And also, um, Creative in Germany has is a reseller for Zandros, I believe. Does that mean that they support the or have a position on the uh, recent agreement with Microsoft? <laughs> no, we weren't party to that. But have you queried it with them at all? Or um, I have German myself. Side has? I not 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 the time aware of at this stage. Okay, well thank you very much.